Kim here. Welcome to Backyard Blooms. Today we are collaborating with my lovely garden friends. So today's video, I have five lovely gardens for you, including mine. Mine's going to be first. And back in March, we did a video and the video was called Garden Dreams, collaborating with four lovely gardeners to make garden dreams come true. And I'll post that video at the very end on my end screen if you want to go back and watch that video if you missed it or if you're new to my channel. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. The more likes that I have, the more YouTube pushes the video out and the better that I do and I can do better for you and make sure you subscribe. But if you have not went to the other channels as well, make sure you go and like and share and subscribe to their videos as well. So back in March, we described what we were wanting to dream about and now we are giving updates so today i am here to give you a lovely update so the very first garden is my own and here is my cottage garden do you be a naughty sasha sasha do you be a naughty huh i'm really enjoying my new shoes from hasa make sure you look at the link in the description Welcome to Backyard Blooms. In today's video, we are going to do an update on my cottage garden. Back a couple of months ago, we did a collaboration with my gardening friends and it was in the springtime and now it is mid-May and we're going to do another collaborating video and giving you a great update on my cottage garden. I don't know if you can see Sasha, she's coming to see me. Are you going to come garden with me today, Sasha? So today I came out this morning and I was so excited. You guys, if you can just be still in your garden, you're gonna see all the nature come to you. Today, I was so excited because I got great footage of some hummingbirds that were enjoying the vanilla there and here in my garden that I planted just specifically for them. And then I got to see a gorgeous yellow swallowtail that enjoyed the uh, peach verbena that I having my containers here and all the bees you guys like they are so loving all the uh, catmint that I have here in the garden especially the walkers low and you can probably see several of them buzzing around and they love the gara and they especially love the baptisia that I have in my garden so I'm really excited to share my I guess early summer garden with you guys and some of the things that I talked about that I planted in the garden before some of them are doing well, but it seems like it takes a couple of years for them to like actually thrive and come back and do good like the second year. So some of the plants that I planted actually last year, like my white gara, is being gorgeous this year. And it looks very beautiful against these purple blooms on my Walker's Low. And then I have the white gara above that. And if you've not watched my video on the white gara, I talked about that they are dancing butterflies in your garden. And they truly, truly do look like dancing butterflies in the garden. And then I was away for the weekend, spending Mother's Day with my children, and I came back and these gorgeous cantaloupe cone flowers have bloomed. And they're like peeking up over the gara. So not only do I have the Walker's Low cat mint, and then I have my white gara, and then I have these gorgeous uh, melon cone flowers above that. It's just so, so pretty. And then on top of that, behind that, my, you see the hummingbird right there behind me? And then on top of that, my little gem magnolia is starting to bloom. So I have multiple layers in my garden here in the cottage garden. And that's what I really wanted to achieve. And I've got fullness. So I have absolute fullness. And then I want to have something in my cottage garden that's going to bloom all the time at all different seasons. So in the springtime, I had my silly daffodils and then I had my perennials such as my pink and blue blooming. I had my hellebores that were blooming and my bleeding hearts that were blooming. I had so many things that were blooming during that time. And now that those blooms are already gone in the springtime, but not only did I got to enjoy the blooms in the springtime, now I got the gorgeous foliage and the texture that that 
plant gave me now here in my garden. So I want to encourage you to get out into your garden and let nature come to you. Like, like I said this morning, I so enjoyed that hummingbird that came to my millionaire and I'm going to show all these pictures and that I shared with you that I videoed this morning and that gorgeous swallowtail was absolutely beautiful. And then I even had like a little bird kind of like walking through the garden looking for little insects or whatever it was looking for to feed on. And I encourage you to go out and plant the things. If you want to bring in hummingbirds to your garden, if you want to bring in butterflies to your garden or even pollinators such as the bees that I have in my garden, plant those specific plants that they absolutely love. And I've already shared some of the ones that they love. The millionaire, they love the catnip, they love the verbena, they love the lantana and so many more and the baptisia. And I've got so many beautiful things to share with you today. And like I said, I've got fullness in my garden. I have texture in my garden. And all the things that I planted last year are really thriving. And some of the things that I just planted this year from seed are gonna be thriving next year or even later in the summer. So I'm excited to give you another update later in the summer as well. Just to give you an example of things that I did from seed right now are just now starting to get established into my garden, such as the lupines, the delphinium, the foxgloves, some of the salvia that I planted. So I think like later in the summertime, those things are gonna like shine. Well, right now they're just like little babies into my garden and starting to get established. So let me turn the camera around and show you my beautiful cottage garden. Beautiful this is. I was going with that peach fuzz pantone of the year and look how gorgeous this peachy verbena is. And this is the new brand new super tunia that came out this past year, this yellow. Yellow finch is absolutely gorgeous. And then I already had ivy in here from last year so I kept that. And then of course I have that gorgeous familiar that you just enjoyed that lovely Hummingbird enjoying all the gorgeous nectar of this millionaire. So I do love the colors. I love a pop of yellow into my garden because it brings a lot of brightness. Since I do have a lot of green, these cryptomeria trees are doing great. They're providing me some shade. Like I said, I get to play around with this garden this year because I do have part sun and I have sun and then I have shade as well. This Vigo garden that I have from Vigo Garden is a tomato planter cage. It's doing really good. If you missed that video where I planted all this up and talked about how wonderful this Vigo garden is, take a look at that. And you can tell how much rain that we've had, like you guys, because it's just bringing this up. I need to empty this a little bit. That's how much water we've had here this past May. This right here is the pink salvia that I just planted in the garden and it's just starting to get established. And then I have all the daphneums too that are starting to like really put on some growth. And I do have one over there that started to bloom and I alternated the white and the lavender color of the daphnium that I have here in the garden. So I'm really excited about that. Like I said, it might be more of summertime before I get to see these like really get established and starting to bloom. And then I have the Agastache. This is something that I planted last spring when we talked about what I was gonna add into the garden. And then of course you have the Salvia. If you want to have more blooms, make sure you go in and deadhead your Salvia. I have some spit blooms there. And then look at this gorgeous Baptisia right there. You can enjoy, like you can see the bumblebee or the bees on there just adoring this plant. That's a beautiful plant. I love how the it gives like a tall presence in the garden and like I said like even after it blooms I love the structure that it still gives into the garden as well. I have some daylilies over there. I have some spurge. I have a pineapple lily that's doing really well. Lemon coral sedum. And then underneath the cryptomeria trees this is where I planted those hostas that we talked about just to give you an update and then I have a couple roses that are leaning on the ground there as well 
Walker's Low Cat Mint gives a big presence into my cottage garden and the bees just love that, like I told you as well. And then behind that, I have the Bleeding Heart that I planted this past year and I still really like the foliage on that. Look at the leaf structure, just so pretty. And then the hellebores are still kind of peeking behind that. You can see the hellebores right here mixing in with the bubble gum. Supertunia from Proven Winners. It is like a workhorse in the garden. So if you need to fill some spaces, put some annuals and they're gonna give you some great color as well. And this is my Beyond Pink Coreopsis that I'm really excited about. And then just all the other little frogs and birds that are in mixed into the garden here as well. More of the Nepeta and then the Gara. And you can see the bees are loving that as well. And this is the most exciting plant that I planted in the garden this past summer. So this is from Monrovia and it is called Teeny Genie. It is a compact lantana and look at the color on that you guys the butterflies are going to so love this plant once it gets established now this is a zone nine i'm a zone eight here in charlotte north carolina but one of the owners when i asked him about this plant because none of my lantana came back this year he said you know i can go out and spend 70 dollars on a steak dinner tonight and it's absolutely gone but at least i get to enjoy this plant all summer long and into the fall and I absolutely agree. And if I wanted to, I could probably pull this plant up out of the ground and put it into the garage for next year. But how gorgeous is that? Love it. Mixed in here, I have the candy corn spirea and it just went out of bloom. And then look, you guys, this is what I said when I came back from my trip to Ken from Kentucky, I saw these cantaloupe cone flowers blooming and they are so pretty. I have lots of different cone flowers that I did plant in here last year, so I'm pretty excited. I bought those from Bare Root, and you can see the second year they just do so much better, and they're so much fuller as well. In the Gara, I did plant last year also. I have white Gara, and then I have some light pink Gara and some dark pink, and every one of the colors of Gara is so nice. And then down below, I have another vine that I got from Bare Root. It's the Black Eyed Susan, but this one is a tangerine color. They have different colors, yellow, they have a white, and then the tangerine. So I'm pretty excited about that. Once that gets established and starts growing up, this obelisk, I think it's going to be really, really pretty. But I love how the gara is just kind of mingling in with that as well. Isn't it gorgeous? And then look at the little gem magnolia so pretty i'm starting to get some buds and some blooms out of that this has been in the garden for i think about three years it's going to make make a nice structure plant in the garden as well and i have three of these concrete containers i did get these from everybody asked me where i get them from i got these from wilson's and i've honestly not have seen these containers anywhere else. I found some at Lowe's that were very something similar and were, were very cost effective. And if you like this, they do have this from Unique Stone, but it's a little bit more pricier. Coming around this container, we have the Candy Corn Spirea. And I just really love all the colors on this plant. You got red, orange, chartreuse, yellow, just absolutely beautiful. And then I have a few volunteers here as well. Some of the pansies dropped from my fall container, so I'm enjoying them as well. You might as well have some freebies along the way. And then above this, the lilac's already gone out of bloom too. It's a re-blooming re lilac, so I'm pretty excited about that. And then behind that, I finally may get to see some blooms on my pufferfish hydrangea. And then behind that, I have another rose of Sharon that's gonna be pink. And then beyond that, I have some butterfly weed. So last year didn't do good, and we're gonna see if it does good this year. I got that in a bare root form as well. And then coming down below, you can see the junipers behind in the back. The more sun they get, the more gold they get. And then the hellebores are still hanging on and having a few little blooms. A lot of times you have to go in and deadhead those as well. And then 
the lungwort looks really good, has great foliage, and then coming on down. And then the Jacob's Ladder, it's gone out of bloom as well, but still a great structure in the garden and it looks more like fern-like. And then I planted another yellow lantana here. So I think the, the butterflies are gonna love that as well. Like I said, make sure you plant like things that you want to attract. And then coming down, I grew this from seed. This is a lavender, English lavender. And then some hostas that came back from last year. This one's called Wrinkle in Time. So along with the hosta, I have the astilbe. And this one's just about ready to go into bloom and put on some tall spikes, which I love in a cottage garden. And then above that, we have some blooming phlox. There's the spikes on the astilbe. Pretty excited about that. That's the first astilbe that I planted in this garden. You can still see I have some foliage from my silly daffs. And then these are the blooms of the tall flocks. And my agapanthus is starting to bloom, so I get to enjoy some of those blooms. And when they get real tall and spiky too, they're gonna be really pretty the second year as well. You can see the bees just loving this gara. And then this is where I planted all the lupine right there. And I just have a whole drift of it planted, mingled all the way in through these, all the way down and it even further beyond that, you can see some foxglove. And then here's the foxglove right here. Just a big drift of it. Today's a bit cloudy. Of course, we've had a lot of rain. Here's one of my hanging baskets. It's gorgeous begonias coming around. I'm gonna throw some pictures of some clips of the sun that I had yesterday as well. I have some of my David Austin roses. This is Olivia. And then the clematis is looking gorgeous on this trellis there. And then I have Nellie Stevens that I made into like a little topiary tree. And I'm gonna give you the good, bad, and ugly. For some reason, this plant right here, this Nellie Stevens, has some yellowing to the leaves and some black spots. I'm gonna have to come in here and spray some fungicide. I've already sprayed it once, but I don't think it was enough. It's starting to fill out a little bit, so I need to get this under control. And this is the only one that has it. This one's doing great over there. I've been trying to control the deer, but they're still getting in here somehow. And they eaten off some of the blooms onto this, this David Austin rose. And then this one right here, I just cut it all the way back. I'm gonna pull that one up, you guys. So do not be scared to pull things up if they don't perform well in your garden. This one has constantly got either some kind of fungus, its leaves drop. So the second year it's done the same thing, so it's gonna come out. This Olivia David Austin rose is looking really good. Let's enjoy the blooms on her. She's so pretty. This one is a really good shrub that gets about four feet tall and has lots of repeat bloomers. And then behind that, I still have the gold junipers and more creeping flocks. And then I have three different colors of the Rose of Sharon. And they have not bloomed out yet, but so far the deer have left them alone. But I know they've been in the garden. I think it's a baby one that's been getting through. And then I have some dahlias that are coming up here. And then my new shrub that I planted not too long ago was the Temple of Bloom. Really excited about that one. That one has all year around interest as well. And then this rose has pretty much gone out of bloom, but look how pretty that color is. It's kind of more of a peachy color. And then I had it mixed in here with this Happy Jack Clematis. And it is happy. This is the other side of the Happy Jack Clematis. You guys, can you not get any more beautiful than that? Year after year after year, it just keeps getting fuller and fuller. It is gorgeous. It almost looks like 
purple stars, doesn't it? And then below it, I have some daylilies that are growing at its feet. They say that clematis or clematis likes shady feet. So I gave it some shady feet. And then I have some more of the nepeta, this one right here. I have cat's pajamas and cat's meow, both in this area right here. Like I said, it's rained a lot. So some of the blooms have got knocked over. Some are still standing tall. And then I planted some lilies here too for my cut flower garden as well. Button bush, I think it got ate by the deer, look. And then this little strawberry hydrangea tree bush, I'm never gonna see that one bloom. The very end of the garden, I planted some uh, lemon jade seed on. And that looks well, the deer seem to have left it alone. And then this yarrow looks really pretty. And I'm trying to keep this yarrow growing so I could have it for cut flowers too. Like even the new blooms and some of the spent blooms look pretty too. So I think you could even use some of the spent blooms and a bouquet as well. Make sure you keep up on your weeds. I've got a weed growing here. They're easy to pull if you find them when they're little. So here you go, guys. The bad and the ugly. This is my ugly part right here. I really, really do care about my manicured, my manicured grass. I'm gonna have to come back and put some sod here because it's too shady right here and the tiff turf does really well. So I'm gonna add some of that this weekend. And then coming back up the hill here, just giving you a glance at how pretty this cottage garden is in May. I love the cottage garden because it's always changing. I encourage you to go to the nursery every single month and buy one flowering plant. And then that way you will have something blooming in your garden that you can enjoy every single month. This is the container that I did for the Palisades Women's Club. I did a sun container and a shade container, and this is my sun container. Dawn's got the shade container. We mixed perennials. We did the gara, the dark pink gara, the white gara. So you can replant that and repurpose that in your garden later. We have a sun coleus that takes the sun, and then we have some Calorbacoas, some supertunias, and then some accent as well. I always enjoy some source of water in the garden. I just love the sound. And then more David Austin roses. This one's called Thomas Graham. I need to come back and deadhead some of my blooms. But gorgeous orangey yellow color. And this is the very end of the cottage garden and it runs just right into the west side garden. This garden right here is in between the two houses and it's on a quite a big of a hill. And I had to plant this garden up for erosion and that will be another video for a different day. You can see I have the light pink gara right here and then some more of the tall phlox. And then in the hanging baskets, I have that summer and snow jasmine and underplanted it with gold dust. I think it's precious and dainty and I love it. Then I underplanted some hosta right here too, since it gets a lot of shade. So here's a sneak peek of the west side garden coming around to the other side of the cottage garden. So we have some tea olives that give us some privacy from our covered porch. More lemon coral sedum, and I don't know if you can tell how big of a slope we are here. I have these junipers that I put in originally for erosion because it's on the hill and it was on the other side that I never really get to see. 
but it's filled in really, really nice. And then here's my invisible fence to keep the deer out. You can see the comb flowers still peeking above everything on the other side. Magnolia. This is the puffer fish, hydrangea, my butterfly weed. Hopefully it'll bloom this year. It did not bloom last year. My Rose of Sharon, have some comb flowers. This is most likely a weed that has gone to flower right here. That's gonna have to come up. My bearded irises have already bloomed. And then coming down here, the other side of the Rose of Sharon's. Look at this dahlia, you guys. It's just cutting so big. It's almost as big as the Rose of Sharon. I'm probably gonna have to give it some support. The other side of the Happy Jack. And then look how big this one is. It's taller than me, this Rose of Sharon. How big this weed is. And these are all the little baby seeds that I planted up this past year. Look at the white delphinium. Love the spurge. I love the texture and the blooms. This one's a blue glacier. Daylily is about ready to bloom. Excited about that. Look at the carrots in there, you guys. I'm gonna have to find some new annuals because these pansies are gonna like peter out, but I think I'm gonna have to keep that carrots. What do you think? All right, guys, get out in your garden and enjoy your garden. Enjoy nature. Nature brings you closer to God. It brings you closer to all the little creatures that God provided for us. Like I am in love with my cottage garden. I'll see you in the next video. Bye friends. On another side note, please make sure you like, share, and subscribe. The more likes that you give me and the more comments that you give me, it sends it out more into the YouTube world and I can do better for you. So the next beautiful garden is Betty and Betty has a YouTube channel called Simply Southern Flair and she also gardens in North Carolina and let's go look at Betty's garden. Hey y'all and good morning. Welcome back to my garden. Today I am going to be working with some of my flower friends on another collaboration video. So we did a video about a month ago about our garden dreams. And my garden dream was to have a cottage garden. And we have been working really hard on creating the cottage garden. So I wanna show you what we've created so far and some of the ideas that I have to make it look more cottagey. So let me turn the camera around and give you a look. Okay, Miss Winnie, do you wanna show our friends our cottage garden? All right, let's go show them, come on. Okay guys, so here is our cottage garden. This was just a blank slate a couple of months ago. And we have come in and added some of the structure that I feel like will be a good start to a cottage garden. So first we talked about the fence. So we have the fence in the background and that's kind of like giving us a border to work within. And then our next part is that we planted the tall guy arborvitaes. So that will also give us a nice backdrop. And between each tall guy, 
we have transplanted our Incrediballs that were up front. So as you can see, we have like this pattern with the tall guy and the Incrediball and the tall guy going along all through the cottage garden. So then after that, after we had our fence and then our background structure, we started to add in some of our ground cover. So we've done really good with adding lots of ground cover. We did lamium and we did hookahs and hostas and we already had some of the um, the things you see here on the front. We already had this hydrangea here and this phlox here and this autumn joy sedum here. So those were already in place when we got started. So we've um, working really hard on getting the ground cover in because I feel like the more ground cover you have, then the less weeds that you're going to have to pull. And speaking of weeds, we also added in a layer of really deep, thick mulch that's also going to help us with the weed control. So as I'm looking at the cottage garden, though, I feel like there may be some elements that are missing. And I feel like that, that fullness that I'd like to see, and then also the tallness. So we know that the Incredibles are going to get taller and the tall guys will get taller, but it does take time. So I was looking around and trying to think about different plants that would look good in a cottage garden that would be taller. So let me show you one of the plants that I have bought to add to our cottage garden. So this is the plant that I bought to go in our cottage garden. And I have a neat story on these plants. So one of the first houses that we bought in Georgia had a lot of these plants around and I didn't know what they were. They were beautiful. They have, they self seeded everywhere. Um, they had these gnarly, um, like thorns on them, but they were a beautiful plant. So as I got into more research, we found out that they were called a Cleome. And that was the old timey version with the thorns and they would self seed. Now this is the new version by Proven Winners. This is the Senorita Rosalita and it's a Cleome. It gets 24 to 48 inches tall. And this one doesn't have the thorns. Well, it says it doesn't have thorns, but it does have like really, really small ones. Not like the old timey version. So I have seen a couple little thorns on this one. Um, and it's supposed to not self-seed everywhere because this will pretty much take over everything. So these are really pretty. They do kind of have a strong smell to them, but they're a very hardy plant to add into your garden. Plus they give you the tallness that you want. They give you the color and they also give you that fullness. So I'm very excited to plant these in the garden. Then the next one that I got, this is also going to add a little bit of height, but what I'm most excited about is adding um, a place for our pollinators and for our hummingbirds. So this is called a Vermillionaire. It's not really the colors that I would choose for my cottage garden, but I don't mind having it in here for the fact that I would love to have this for the hummingbirds and for the pollinators. So this is the next one that we're going to be planting, and it gets 18 to 28 inches tall. That's the Vermillionaire. And then the last one we got here is a Lupine. And we actually did find a little cricket was eating on this the other day. And it was breaking off the branches as it was um, eating on it. So we ha we'll have to watch out th for this one with the crickets and other pests that try to get to it. But they're going to add that nice tallness to the garden that I'm looking for. And this was, um, I'm not really sure what color this is going to be because it's kind of like a little gallery mix. So splashes of blue, yellow, pink, red, and white. And this one gets 12 to 18 inches tall. So I'm excited about adding this one into the garden as well. So I think this is going to help us with adding that tallness that I feel like that I'm missing in our cottage garden. All right, guys, so let's get these planted. It has been so much fun sharing this stream with you guys. And I can't believe the transformation that we've had from just a few months ago to today. So my garden dream, guys, is coming to life right before our very eyes. And I'm so glad that you get to join me 
as we're planting this together and as we're learning how to build a cottage garden. So stay tuned and we're going to have some more videos as this cottage garden transforms into this beautiful space. I hope you have a chance to get in your garden today and we'll see you real soon. Bye friends. So the next garden is Lynn and Lynn has a YouTube channel called Lynn Purse and her garden is all about the Woodland Garden and I just love her little dog named Pixie. So let's go look at Lynn's garden. Hi and welcome to my garden for the May update to our Garden Dreams collaboration. A lot has happened in two months. I'll be including updates from Emily, Kim, Deborah, and Betty at the end of the video so that you can see how their garden dreams are progressing. Pixie arrived two years ago and she created a woodland path on our morning walks. Last fall, that path became the woodland walk for a new garden. This spring, a tree came down, hollow to the core, and served a new purpose. As a planter, as wood chips for the path, and a dramatic edge for that path. Fortunately, the May apples survived the tree fall and they grew up around it. They even bloomed. The native plantings that we put in last fall are beginning to fill out and some of them have even begun to bloom. My friend Bill gave me clumps of white violets and also giant Solomon seal. The service berry blooms very early and these are several young trees on either side of the path, underplanted with bloodroot and tiarella. I transplanted several clumps of wild violets at the end of the bed and they're blooming profusely along with woodland flocks. One of my favorite trees is our native black cherry and we have five of them blooming along the fence. What to do with the short logs? Well, I decided to create a small stumpery, a place to plant ferns and small wildflowers. Pixie was intrigued. We dug up ferns encroaching on the lawn and we hauled them to the stumpery and planted them. It will take a while for them to settle in and grow, but the process has begun. With all the green planting, I wanted to add a focal point, but maybe something larger. We discovered several pagoda dogwoods in the woods, and they have begun blooming and will provide berries in the fall for the birds. I still have so much to plant. The winter sown seedlings are almost ready to put in the ground. transplanted Virginia bluebells and woodland iris, woodland asters, and woodland goldenrod. A 24-hour storm brought several inches of rain and the garden and the woods have suddenly become full and lush. Growth will come quickly now, and I can't wait to see what summer brings. The next garden is Deborah, and Deborah Gardens in Georgia, and her YouTube channel is called Inspiring Gardener Corner. So let's go take a look at Deborah's garden. Good morning, garden friends. It is overcast today, but that's like for me, this is the best time to be out in the garden. Plus, it rained, and I just so love 
to come out and visit the garden after a, a, a nice rain. Uh, today, we are doing um, another collaboration on our garden dreams. And my garden dream is tied to my secret garden and some of my vision that I had for what I wanted this to be. Now, with gardening, we know uh, plants change. And one of the things that I'll show you that we are going to have to be reevaluating the direction that we want to go with adding pergolas that we want to add in here to create more of a secret garden. But I also want to share with you some of the beauty that is happening in the garden. Um, with some of the seedlings that I thought was not going to take. Um, a lot of the perennials that are coming to life. Um, some of the changes that I'm going to be making in the garden only because, you know, I'm looking to get some annuals uh, in here to add some additional color as the perennials start to start to bloom with their flowers. So come along with me while we go inside the secret garden. Now, one of the things that I was inspired by from Pinterest was this photo to add um, the arbors in here. Well, because my Texas vertex is just doing so well. And like I said, I'm in the process of grooming it to become more of a tree instead of a shrub. So um, we've been cutting branches at the bottom. But the one thing that I'm noticing because it's loving its life, um, the branches are spilling over into the lower garden bed. So what I'm gonna end up doing is trimming that back because the premise with adding the arbors in here was I thought I was going to be able to put two here, but because of how well this is growing, I'm probably only going to have Kevin do one here and then one on the other side to where I'm still giving the Texas lilac uh, room to grow and then also add that secretness um, to the garden as it grows. But let's just go ahead and take a look at some of the plants that are in the garden. And I'll let you know some of the things that I'm going to be looking at adding to because most of my plants in here are perennials. Um, I like to have a splash of color, which right now I have my violas and my dusty millers. I'm finding some annuals that will add to the color, preferably yellow, because um, as you'll be able to see, I like the yellows, the pinks, the purples um, in my garden because I think it just brings so much vibrancy to your garden. So let's just go ahead and take a walk through the garden and see what is actually blooming. Okay, because this garden is like three tiers, three tiered beds, let's just start with the back. So that is my lavender on the end. And then these are my milkweeds that I planted from seeds. You guys can see, you know, I was concerned whether or not they were going to uh, be successful. Look at my cosmos. I actually pinched these back based off of uh, feedback from one of my subscribers. And look how full these guys are. This is my blue mist spria and looky here. This, this is the thing too. I try to plant things that will bring the pollinators to my garden. This here is my gumfrina that's doing well. Um, that there is um, some Veronica that I transplanted. I got some, I believe these are, let me giant double zinnias that's what these are and then these are my dwarf sunspot 
sunflowers. Look at these guys. Now they're supposed to get, I believe, 36 inches in height. And I think that is going to look absolutely gorgeous. And these are not the singles. Look at this. I have multiple sunflowers on this. So this is going to be absolutely gorgeous. And I just think the contrast that it's going to have to the blue mess uh, Spria is going to be gorgeous. And then I have the other version of the sunflowers. Now those guys, I only believe they get to 18 to 24 inches. And then I have them next to my um, other batch of Cosmos. And my verbenum is doing so nice. And the one thing that I am loving about this because it is trailing to be able to have this whole area just in golf and then with my variegated Larapi, got my yarrow here and then just for some wispiness have a garo in that area and then another version of garo back there but this and, oh and then guys my hibiscus i thought that was a goner and I was gonna pull out I get so impatient sometimes it's not funny but it is doing so fantastic and I cannot wait until it it blooms I, and I think it's black midnight or something like that I'll 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 put the name of it up oh and then look here my irises are starting to pop up and you know, that's the thing with gardening. You, you wanna be able to have a variety of things that are blooming at different times, you know? And that's what I try to strive for. The other thing is my Eden Climbing Rose. Uh, for those of you that uh, came to the garden tour or saw my video, you saw this thing was just prolifically blooming. And it's, it's dying back. But guys, I mean, even with it dying back, these roses are so pretty. They are just so gorgeous. But this is also a re-blooming climbing rose. So I'm going to go through and get all of the dead stuff, any of the leaves that uh, may look like they're damaged, moved off because you can see right here, I have new shoots coming and I want all that energy to go towards um, producing me another flush of flowers. I trimmed and cleaned up my rose bush. And guys, like I said, you can see, let me get that off of there. You can see new growth on here. And this is a rebloomer. So I'm excited about this rose bush being covered once again with these beautiful white and pink flowers. My guarded dream for my secret garden is coming along so nicely. I'm loving the Texas Vertex Lilac being center stage and the thought process of being able to add the arbors to my garden, I believe will create elegance, add to the seclusion, add to the intimacy that I want my secret garden to exhibit. And the last garden is Emily. And Emily Gardens in California and she has a zen garden and she has a youtube channel called the scent of a garden so let's go look at emily's garden hi long time no see my name is emily and i'm coming to you from the scent of a garden in southern california zone 10b sunset zone 22 also known as my backyard my garden focuses on flowers, foliage, and fragrance. And for me, my dream garden bed, known as the Zen garden bed, is inspired by a trip I took to Bali. And to recap, 
this is the mood board that shows the direction that I'd like for this garden bed to go in. Now, I shared this vision a couple months ago. So this brings me to a confession that I suffer from spring squirrel, spring squirrel syndrome or some call it spring bright shiny object syndrome or I call it spring pretty petal syndrome. So just in short, yeah, I got distracted with all of this zinnias and dahlias that are hardening off and I can't wait to plant out and geraniums and nasturtiums and back there are uh, hyacinthine so there's been a lot going on garden related mostly and some not garden related but in any case I do have progress to share and while I'm not as far along as I'd hoped at this point in the growing season, every step towards the goal counts. So, so let me turn the camera around and share some updates. Now, I know this is still in the container because it's a placeholder and you see the two, one, two, three, uh, concrete, broken concrete pieces I had to remove. biggest change right now is adding the two uh, Abyssinian bananas or ensete. See here are the different textures and leaves that I'm considering. So you have this here, which at least at Home Depot, they call it the China doll. And Abbeys, I affectionately call them the Abbeys, in pots because of the ficus roots. Those are serious. You see them all the way back there. And I don't know if I'm going to hit a root. I also want to make sure that these are happy. Yes, they look very happy. Um, and I will eventually get them in the ground. What's nice about having them in a pot is being able to add color. So the color that's added in this pot is uh, coleus and sun patience and a proven winner, jazzberry supertunia and a begonia. This uh, hookah right here, I don't know, that's a trial. Uh, and then more alicotia and then you have the acanthus and a darker alicotia. I may switch the position because it's already dark back there and this is a brighter uh, color that would pop from back there to here. And then there's one more plant right here. I don't know what that's called, but it loves the shade. And this acanthus Look at the leaves on it. It's gorgeous. And the color is beautiful. It's also a little spiky, so you gotta be careful. Uh, so in the second Abbey container, there is Coleus and Diplandina and a white Impatient. 
Uh, then you come back around, <laughs> you see the Camilla is in a tray so I can continue to bottom water and Kimberly Fern. And then in the back is this everyday poem. It's usually used as a house plant, but I like the leaf variation that it provides. So that's there. And all the way in the back is one pygmy palm. And then we can swing around. There is another pygmy palm. And yes, the fountain is still in the styrofoam box. It will be until everything's planted. And then here is a variegated uh, plant that I also like against this plant whose name I can't remember right now. I'll put it up on screen. And so as you see the hints of red from the cordyline and how they continue, how that color continues over here in the uh, Bali inspired Zen. I like it. I like that addition. So while it does take me a while to make a decision, this one, I'm almost done. And then maybe here, maybe here in a container, I'll add the red kanas just in front of the eucalyptus. I'm not sure though. <laughs> And then here you have the calla lilies and in between the calla lilies I will add the caladiums and the caladiums are a similar leaf text shape uh, but will also add that pretty another shade of red. So I keep telling myself, this is a judgment-free zone. Every step towards the goal counts. So I hope you enjoyed this update and I hope you enjoy your flowers and the fragrance in the air. See you in the next video. I hope you enjoyed all these lovely gardens. I sure did. And I can't wait to the next updates. So I'll see you in the next video. Bye friends.